Number 16. The pressure of a sample of gas is measured at sea level with an open-ended mercury manometer. Assuming the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, determine the pressure of the gas in millimeters of mercury, ATM, and kilopascals. And then they give us this lovely drawing here. So there's two different types of manometers. There's close-ended and then there's open-ended manometers. In this case, we're dealing with an open-ended one. And what an open-ended manometer means is that this side, this little opening here, is open to the external environment. So the atmosphere pressure is going to be involved with this manometer. So the atmospheric pressure is interacting with this manometer, and I'm just going to put the number here that the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, to just draw, there are two different types of uh, open-ended manometers that you can see. So in which, the and what I'm trying to draw is just this little piece right here. So one end on the right-hand side is going to be open to the atmosphere, just like in our little picture. And then the other side is going to be uh, with the gas, G for gas. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now there's two different options here, right? In which case, one could have a higher uh, amount of gas on the gas side and a lower amount on the atmospheric side. And then on the flip side, you could have a lower amount on the gas side, and then you have a higher amount on the open-ended side. Going by what our picture is here, which scenario are we in? Yeah, we're on this one, right? In which the right side, the one that's with the atmosphere, is higher than the gas side. So hopefully you see that. Now, from here we have two different formulas. If you see that your right side, or the one that is close to the atmosphere, is lower than the other side, right? This in turn means subtraction. But if you have the gas side being higher on the atmospheric side, that means that it's going up and that's interpreting as being a plus. So when we have to write a formula here, basically the pressure of our gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So I'll just say ATM, the pressure of the atmosphere, ATM, plus because we're now higher on the atmosphere side. So it's plus the height. So it's the height difference of the two of them. And they gave you that number, 26.4. So now pause the video if you need to. I just wanted to show you how we get this formula from the two different ones. Um, just know that if you had this option, this positive would just be a negative. But just pause the video if you want to draw uh, these little drawings. But they're going bye-bye. I know that they should stay up here forever <laughs> because they're so beautiful. But... I'm sorry. <clears throat> Ooh, my voice. Still sick, guys. Hanging in there. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So let's fill in the numbers here, right? So pressure of the gas would equal the atmospheric pressure, which is, they told us, which was 760 millimeters of mercury. And now we're going to add the height between the two sides of the manometer. So that's 26.4, and they told us that that's centimeters, and they said that it was an open-ended mercury manometer, so this is centimeters of mercury. But now, whoa, 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 right? Remember, if we want to add things together, they have to be in the same unit. But in this case, the atmospheric pressure is in millimeters, and the other height, that's in centimeters. So I got to change one of them. Now, since one of the answers is in millimeters of mercury, it would make more sense to keep this one and change this one. So all we would have to do is change the 20, and maybe I'll do it up here, the 26.4 centimeters of mercury into millimeters. Now, this is just a difference in height, right? Don't really focus on the mercury part. All we're doing is we're just uh, converting centimeters to millimeters, right? 
And we can go from centimeters to meters to millimeters like we did all the way back, you know, in the beginning of chem. But it's just easier to know that for every one centimeter, that equals 10 millimeters. Makes life much more easier. So if you want to just multiply this by 10, you can do that. If you want to see it dimensional analysis way, you'll times by a ratio, throw the centimeters on the bottom, right? Because we don't want that. We'll put the millimeters up on the top and then 10 millimeters per every one. And that's why you would also times by uh, 10 as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scooch this mercury value over here because now it's millimeters of mercury. So beautiful. Okay. So let's see. This equals 264 millimeters of mercury. This is now the height. This is what's now going to be here. So instead of 26.4 centimeters of mercury, I'm going to say that this is 264 millimeters of mercury. And now I can find out the pressure of the gas because the two units are the same. So now 260 plus two, uh, 264. So I get 1,000 and 24, and that's millimeters of mercury. And we just found out the first answer. So that's the pressure of the gas. In millimeters of mercury, it's 1,024. Okay. So now I just got to do it again for ATM. So I will take this answer and just convert it into ATM. So 1,024 millimeters of mercury. Now just remember these big four. Uh, units of mercury, and they're all equal to each other, okay? So all you got to do is just pick out the two that you need. I need ATM, and I need millimeters of mercury. Oh, well, one ATM equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So I can do that conversion times by a ratio, throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom, in this case it's millimeters of mercury, and then put the unit you want on the top, ATM. One ATM equals 760 millimeters of mercury. Cancel out millimeters of mercury. And now you just do the division. That divided by 760. And I need four sig figs. So one, 1.347. That's ATM. I say that we need three, uh, four sig figs because you always take it from what it was in the beginning. And remember, um, conversion factors, they have nothing to do with significant digits. So this is the answer for the second one, which I'm just going to bring this up to the top. Okay, one last one. I now need to go to kilopascal. So I'll take it from the 1,024 millimeters of mercury, but look down here, right? 760 millimeters of mercury equals 101.325 kilopascals. So I can basically just go to a different unit instead of ATM, right? And maybe I'll get rid of this just to show you, right? Millimeters of mercury goes on the bottom. Kilopascals goes up on top. And now it's 101.325. And that's equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So that's why you keep the 760 down here. Millimeters of mercury cancel out. And now we'll just do 1024 times 101.325 divided by 760. Four sig figs, I get 136.5. And maybe I'll do that. Make that in black. So this would be, oop, where'd it go? There it is. 136.5. And that's Kila Pascal. Not bad. Converting it up. 136.5 kPa. And now we are all done. Check that off. And number 16 is done. Just, uh, just one last thing. I just want to say that all of these are the same amounts of pressure, but just expressed differently 
in different units. And that's all that we're doing here. Okay, guys? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button and tell your classmates about this channel. Just trying to get the word out there that this, you know, YouTube channel exists and we wouldn't be here without you guys. So we appreciate you very much. Thank you so much for all your kindness and all your help throughout this whole journey. And let's keep going. All right. Keep working hard and I'll see you all in the next lesson. Okay. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.